Hello everyone, welcome back to Unmole Astrology channel. Now today's video is going to be about how to predict through the planets moon and sun. Okay, so we'll start with the moon first, then we'll talk about sun, right? So moon, moon is a planet of our emotions, our decision making. See, uh, decision making is actually partially uh related to moon and partially related to mercury because mercury is your intelligence how intelligently you take a decision but how you react to an environment and take abrupt decisions or how your emotional well-being is when you take a decision that is moon so wherever moon is that area is going to tell you about your happiness about conveniences in your life about what makes you uh, peace, makes you at peace, what makes you feel relieved in life. So you'll see wherever your moon is, that is going to be the area which is going to be very closer to your heart. Okay, so now how do we judge it? Judge it? We are going to see that through the screen sharing. Okay, so this is the screen, right? Okay. So, first of all, as usually that you have, uh, as usual that we have done in the earlier videos, that first we have to see where the particular planet is. Like, for example, you have Moon. Just a minute. Um, I have to first drop this setting. Okay. So, for example, if a person has moon in the fourth house, right? First, you need to predict just through the houses and not the signs. Remember that, okay? So fourth house is actually the original domain of the sign of cancer and the rulership of moon. So you, we know that moon does well in the fourth house because that is in its own house and that's the nighttime house. Right? Fourth house is something private because it is one of the moksha houses and it is the nighttime house. So moon, when it when does it flourish? It flourish as it flourishes in the nighttime only. That's why moon in the fourth house does well. But let me also tell you this here that the practical implication of moon would not be very similar to what we feel about moon being in the fourth house. We do feel that moon is comfortable in the fourth house and moon does well in the fourth house. But what are the practical uh, results for it? When you'll go and see in the charts of the people, you'll understand that somehow moon in the fourth house actually makes a person go through a lot of turbulence in their life emotionally. Then it depends on the sign and the conjunction that how good of the growth that is going to be of that particular person out of that turbulence. But whenever moon is in the moksha houses, although moon feels good there because moon has that comfort zone there, moon has that privacy there, they, they develop their peace of mind by themselves. But you'll also see that these people become extremely emotional. Why? Because the moksha houses are originally ruled by moksha signs, right? The water signs. So that's why these people are extremely emotional. They have a tendency to dive deeper into the ocean, into the river, into the water. So whenever you go much deeper into something, see, you have to understand this is your mind. And your mind is actually going <clears throat> way deeper into the water. It will feel fearful. It will feel the intensity, the intensity and sensitivity. So that's why when you'll predict for a person, whoever has his, his or her moon in the moksha houses, you can tell them simply that you have had a very turbulent emotional state over the period of your life. Okay. <clears throat> so now, suppose a person has Sagittarius here. Moon is in the fourth house, originally in the sign of Sagittarius. First, you communicated according to the fourth house moon. 
you know that this person's peace of mind lies in their home and this person's peace of mind and lies when they are resting when they are in a very comfortable place home like place they want all to live near home always they want to have a family they are family oriented people family is their priority so you did that prediction through the fourth house moon now next prediction you are going to do according to the fourth house moon plus moon in the sign of sagittarius so now it's the, in the sign of sagittarius now you'll know that these people actually act like a guru in the home they have a habit of teaching everyone in within the home they always stand up to that position where they are preaching everyone in the home that you shouldn't have done this you should have done this because this is something you should do i am the guru i know the wisdom i know the knowledge so these people have this kind of a behavior it also tells that since you know sagittarius is originally the ninth house it's also related to traveling so you can also tell this person that you love traveling you love comfortable and luxury traveling because this moon could be in the nakshatra of moola that means you are going to visit pilgrimages you feel pilgrimages to be your home so you feel very um you know at peace when you are traveling to a distant place which which involves visiting temples visiting ashrams things like that and suppose if this person has moon in purva ashar they'll be very keen about traveling near waters to a distance and uh, visiting different hotels resorts and suppose it is an uttarashar these people would love to travel for work for other things for exploring for traveling luxury experience so that's why these are the things that you can predict based on a planet first you'd predict with the house that moon and moon is in the fourth house then you will predict that moon is in the sign of sagittarius and if you want to go deeper into it you can predict through the nakshatra always remember 1 plus 1 so it's an addition it's not either or or in astrology right after that we'll take second example suppose moon is in the 12th house and it's in the sign of um which sign should we take in the sign of aries oh let's take capricorn okay so you know this person loves to be in isolation or in their private space because you know 12th house is actually the subconscious mind why do we say that the sign of pisces uh, pisces is quite dreamy because a person tends to dream a lot not just dream a lot they imagine a lot they have good imagination so whenever moon is uh, in the 12th house you'll see these people are mostly in their imaginative world they love to fantasize about things suppose there is venus also conjunct here then a person would love to fantasize about love romance and things like that and they feel comfortable when they are being in a you know they are in a unionship in a way because 12th house is actually how uh, what is your tendency to share your bed with someone it's not typically unionship but it's about bed pleasures so these people love to relax these people love to relax on the bed they love to you know have their own do things at their own pace of time they love to be in isolated places they are not that those people who love to go into crowds uh, and they, you know places like that and they love to travel as well so for a person with moon in the 12th house this person should definitely travel they should definitely go to different places and live away from their home because that's what gives them peace right now if it is in the sign of capricorn what happens capricorn is about fear it's about restriction it's about boundaries and it's also about the society so you'll see that this person although they are very subconscious or uh, subconsciously active we to, uh, we did discuss that they are very fantasizing and things like that in nature 
so what will happen these people will be very practical about these things if they are fantasizing something they'll be very practical so you'll see novelist who um, you know who uh, write novels on very practical subjects even if it it is romance there is a very practical ending to that romance okay so you you'll just see that real uh, realistic behavior within these individuals and they are very restricted they have a very restricted boundaries uh, around their emotions so they know how to balance their emotions because with moon in the 12th house it becomes quite um, difficult for a person to balance their emotions because it's because it is originally the domain of pisces which is the ocean right and the ocean has no end so that's why this capricorn basically helps this moon so as to have a good um boundaries and have a good balance within their emotions okay so that's how you can put it you can also say that these people actually receive good support from foreign governments as well okay so now the last thing is about the aspect right so originally you know that moon's mool trikon sign is the sign of taurus so moon only has the seventh aspect so you know directly opposite to taurus that is going to be scorpio so that's why moon's seventh aspect is always of debilitation so that's why seventh from moon you'll always see that the person's trauma fears and transformation lies seventh from the moon's placement so suppose if you want to know that when a person is going to transform emotionally then what you'll do is actually i don't know if you guys are aware of this thing because i haven't made any video on this according to bcp technique each and every house is denoted by a certain age so suppose like first house is actually the 25th age or the 13th age as well if we go in the initial years so suppose moon is in the 7th house then we know that this person is going to transform big time in the 25th year and 13th year okay and this transformation is going to be about the personality because it's the first house initially and also emotionally because it is seventh from moon so you can predict both but if it was it was in the first house it was some other house like it was seventh house that's i i suppose that goes for 31 yes 31 so that's why if suppose moon was there it's not about the then it the transformation is not going to be about your own personality but it is going to be about your emotional state based on the marriage so because of marriage the transformation was triggered at the age of 31 right this is what you can predict for uh, moon's seventh from moon okay then seventh from moon is the area where your trauma lies your discomfort also lies i know on the writing is not the best <laughs> okay so everything which we consider with a debilitated moon that the, there's lack of peace of mind there's sensitivity there's emotional trauma there's emotional sensitivity because you are actually very emotionally connected with the seventh from moon because that's scorpio but you are connective uh, connect uh, you know connected in a deeper intense and a secretive way so that's why a person's trauma it becomes basically a trauma for an individual because it's debilitated position right so this is about the seventh aspect so whenever since moon only has the seventh aspect whenever the seventh aspect is you know that's the debilitated position now you need to know that why how this debilitation is going to play out so what example we took that it is going to be the example of sagittarius that moon is in the sagittarius then hair is the sign of gemini that means this person's trauma is going to be because of gemini because of the ups and downs in their image because in their childhood they might have had a very notorious image within the society 
So that would have basically caused the trauma. And Gemini is also about exploring. Gemini is also about uh, experimenting a lot of things. So, you know, these people might have experimented or might have uh, ha done so many things out of curiosity. And since it's the 10th house, it's about the image. It's the house of the image of the karma as well. So their own karma has actually caused the kind of trauma within them, the kind of uh, the kind of um, fear within them, right? And you will see that these people uh, do not, uh, you know, their career can also, any change in their career or any ups and downs, fluctuations within their career can actually cause that traumatic experience for that particular individual. But you will see that their career is going to transform them as a person emotionally. Okay. So similarly, if we take this example, moon seventh aspect on the sixth house, and that is going to be the sign of cancer. So that means that somehow because of the mother, because of some conflict with the mother, this person's transformation got triggered and specifically at the age of 30. And there are more ages as well, but I'm just considering one right now. Okay, so it's just the debilitated effect is seventh from the moon and why that debilitation plays out that is going to be dependent on the zodiac sign. Clear? Right? Now we'll consider sun. Okay, so basically sun is what? Sun is your pride, it's your confidence, it's prestige, it's your father, it's, uh, it's your personality. It's how, uh, you know, how dependable you are. This is something I've like very least heard about sun. Sun is about the dependability. Like with a person with debilitated sun, I've not seen them to be very dependable because somehow those people can actually be a little be a little, uh, uh, you know, self-centered, although it's the sign of Libra, right? But the dependability doesn't come there, okay? So suppose if a person has sun in the ninth house. So first, we are going to predict for this person that uh, they are very uh, rigid about their morals. This person gets good name and fame in life because their actions are quite, uh, uh, you know, like uh, walking on a certain moral ethical path. These are these kind of people. So because of that, they gain good amount of fame and good name in the society. Okay. So suppose this sun is exalted here. It is in the sign of Aries. You know, generally when I teach people, I don't consider exaltation and debilitation while teaching. You, okay, you must know which is the exaltation sign, which is the debilitation sign, but you should primarily uh, understand the situation or the placement based on whatever sign it is, rather than is it exaltation or debilitation. So, you know, a sign of Aries is actually more about I am, me, self right? So this is more of a selfish sign, Aries. But it doesn't mean that every Aries individual is selfish. It's just that they are individualistic. They have their own personality and their personality is quite dominating on other people. Because first house is originally the mind, the self. So their mind and energy goes into self. So you'll see these people are quite proudy, but they are very dependable also. They want to do things for other people as well, but they have their self-interest also. 
right so you'll know by the nine by sun being in the ninth house that sagittarius they act as a guru they always go on preaching preaching people they telling people this should be done so they have that very strong personality you'll see with sun in the ninth house and especially in a fire sign this person has a very dominating and strong personality a very bold personality and similar personality is going to be of their father because we are talking about ninth house here right so you are going to judge sun firstly that it is in the sign of uh, uh, it is in originally in the ninth house so this person is going to be quite religious in nature spiritual in nature as well they are going to learn a lot of higher wisdom in their life and you'd also see since it is one of the houses of higher education this person is going to learn a lot academically as well so this might be a person who has gone for a phd or who has practically learned a lot from their business from their work from self study as well okay then second thing you'll see that it is in the sign of aries so it is very it is again in a fiery sign sun feels comfortable in a fiery sign because it is able to illuminate good amount of energy within the fire signs right so basically sun's um uh, feature is to illuminate to provide light so when sun is in the ninth house it is providing light to their morals to their thinking they might have a certain set of principles in their life but they have a good vision towards the future for other people as well okay so now you'll see we'll we have predicted through this now we are going to predict through the aspect now what happens that suppose sun we are we are going to assume that sun is in the sign of leo because that's the mool trigon sign and it has the seventh aspect only so that means seventh from sun you'll see the uh, effect of the sign of aquarius aquarius is about gains it's about large public it is about social circle so you'll see that these people gain through the close friends relatives or neighbors or local government or local neighborhood so you'll see this person is quite famous and well respected within their neighborhood right so they have a capability of taking everyone together seventh from their self so this person likes to have gatherings intimate gatherings okay since it is also about third house is originally about communication so of course their communication is going to get affected from the sun then it is also about courage third house it is also about efforts always remember whenever there are planets like sun jupiter saturn connected with third house in any way suppose they are in the ninth house directly aspecting the uh, third house or they are in the third house initially planets like sun jupiter do not make lot of efforts because they are proudy kind of people they are a little bit arrogant so they do not uh, feel that uh, need to make an effort just things things actually come automatically to them with saturn the efforts are delayed so that is actually a karmic situation with saturn that a person is uh, not uh, uh, into making efforts much into making efforts right after they get those lessons and learnings then only they'll start making efforts right but planets like suppose uh, mercury is there you will be more into making efforts mars is there passionate and strong efforts and uh, stands okay mars can be a little bit diplomatic there mars and moon okay but mars is going to be fierce and diplomatic moon is going to be typically diplomatic venus also uh, with venus and rahu are generally seen people show that they are making efforts but those efforts are not up to mark it's just more showy more show offy right 
so with sun they are going to be make strong stands but strong stands are on a, like a final decision not much of the efforts for things right so that's how you are going to judge you are going to judge that the aspect is being thrown at the third house originally so third house is going to get effect of sun then it is going to be about that it is the domain of aquarius because it is the seventh from sun so that's why you are going to uh, make predictions accordingly like we did earlier then we are going to see which sign is it in it is originally in the sign of libra so sun is basically uh, throwing its seventh aspect on the third house with on the sign of libra so that means the sign of libra is also get, going to get affected so this person is going to have uh, always seek balance within their relationship with their close friends relatives and their neighborhood but because it's the sign of libra it's a sort of debilitated or sort of unfriendly sign for sun it could create some problems for this person because they might lack adjustment doing these things okay and you can also see that this person is very confident about their skills so they won't uh try to uh, you know understand this fact that maybe their skills need some nourishment need some advancement they'll just be like oh i have this talent i have the skills these are the best okay so that's how you judge whenever you judge the planet sun and one thing is very talked about and it's very common that wherever sun sits and wherever it aspects it throws its light so it is going to illuminate that house that house is going to be extremely visible to the person so the qualities of that house come out gracefully okay rest it depends on what planet is in the third house what are the planets conjunct in the third or the ninth house okay these things also matter right so guys this was my analysis about sun and the planet moon that's how you are going to judge these two planets right if you guys are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe like comment and share if you guys would like to have your personal readings from me you can check out the link below www.anmolastrology.com and under the reading section actually consultation section you can book a personal reading for yourself and if you are learners of astrology you can even ping me up under the courses section for uh, uh, you know knowing the details of the course that i have i Uh, generally have two courses available and one master class available on just about marriage and spouse right then if you are learners of astrology and want to know more in with the perspective of learning in astrology then you can follow the unique reading consultation there you'll see readings like nakshatras uh, prabhagi spiritual progress and things like that Okay guys we'll see you next time with another video for Venus and Mercury right okay bye bye take care